So this was about the future, and you know we are also really enabling this future with not probably not this generation of products, but the next generation of products based on our HSA heterogeneous systems architecture. That's exactly this kind of user scenarios, which you know need to analyze loads of data. That's where you know our strategic focus is in terms of the product development. But you know, uh, before I really start, let me introduce myself. My name is Michal Lyshetsky, I'm covering product marketing at AMD, or EMEA. And really I want to build a bit more of the you know, technological product and technical background to whatever you know, Gabriella presented at the, beginning, um, at the beginning of the day today. Um, I'm the only thing that stands in between you and lunch. Um, <laughs> So I don't think I will take more than 30 or 35 minutes, but I hope you know it will be useful from your from the you know technical standpoint of what I'm going to talk about. I want to start with a very similar slide to what Gabriela showed. It's a bit different though, because um, Gabriela's slide really had this split here between hybrids, between Windows-based tablets, between small-screen touch-based notebooks, between uh, premium ultra-thins, between mainstream ultra-thins. Now, do we really know what's going to be a split of those in 2050? Not necessarily. But in any case, this is this new product category. You know, we call it the new client. Uh, the new Windows-based client. Um, the new client based on x86, which really is based on the new form factors. Uh, in, in the categories, you know, which are of the most interest to us and where we put a lot of resources behind are certainly uh, ultra-thin laptops. And by saying ultra-thin laptops, we, I mean, you know, 20 millimeters thin or below laptops. In that category, certainly the new and growing fast 10 inch or 11 inch touch based devices. And then, certainly in that category, are the hybrid devices, which we think uh, have a, you know, looking forward into the future, have a better opportunity th to grow in the market than the, the traditional tablets, especially if we talk about x86 and the, and the Windows ecosystem. So, for all those new devices, whether it's in premium ultra thin or a hybrid, for the new client, we have our focus on the user experiences. And we from AMD side, we want to bring you know, the best possible media experience into those new device categories. We want to bring the, the mobility and the mobile lifestyle. We want to bring the best possible gaming, whether it's in a tablet or, or hybrid form factor or in the ultra thin form factor. <laughs> And I think this is you know, the point where our technology can, can be shown at its best. And finally, we want to be able to share the content uh, across you know, all the devices and screens within, within your, your home. And we have technologies behind all those experiences which enable it. Uh, they won't go them go into them, those in more details right now. So basically, you know, these are our crown jewels of IPs of our intellectual property which enable those experiences. In the next few slides, I'm going to focus on, you know, our key platforms, notebook platforms and desktop platforms that we're launching this year. You know, starting with our uh, 2013 ultra low power platform called Codename Timash. This is the platform which we, you know, we, where we leverage or where our customers, where uh, the OEMs, which OEMs leverage to, develop, to create the low power uh, devices. By low power devices, we mean anything from the tablet to through a hybrid to a small screen touch laptop, you know, 10, 11 inch type of laptop. Um, you know, really, we see that product as, as, as kind of creating a new category of products. I think, you know, if you look into the market uh, through the 
the next part of the year, or the second half of the year, you'll see a, a, the whole plethora of devices, especially in the small screen touch laptop, as well as at the end of the way on the hybrid space, uh, which would be based on our A6 or A4 elite mobility products, which are part of the Tamash line. Um, we focused a lot on the HD media experience in gaming. Uh, we talked about the PC gaming on those very small on those on those, on those very small screen devices. We talked about the enormous GPU graphics performance improvement in comparison to the previous generation of products. We're also talking about a completely new um, architecture on those devices on those platforms. So um, Tamash is our first system on chip. SOC platform. Uh, basically, it does not have. It's basically a single chip solution. It does not have a soft bridge of the fusion controller hub or or, or FCH. Um, it's all integrated onto a single die. That is one of the reasons which which allowed us, which enabled us to dramatically increase uh, performance and at the same, but while at the same time keeping the power under control. So basically, you know, performance goes up, powers go down. So basically, performance per watt in comparison to our previous generation of products on our Tamash is very substantial. We're talking about more than tripling of performance per watt uh, on our dual core and and you know, doubling performance per watt. Uh, sorry, actually it's four times and, and doubling and tripling performance per watt on our quad core solutions. How we position the product competitively? We really talk about our A4 and A6 mobility product as a bridging a certain gap in the market. We place them uh, as significantly better performing than anywhere, anything you see based on Atom in the market. And we, we position that we price positioning them very competitively to I3 ULB and I5 ULB, which you see in the market, while at the same time offering a better, significantly better battery life than the competition in that in that particular product categories. So we see that particular product um, in the 10, 11 inch small form factor in the hybrid space as being you know very competitively both from the pricing or the cost of the system pers per perspective, as well as from the performance and experience perspective. We really have three products in the market based on within our Tamash product stack, and that is A4 in two flavors and A6 in, a, in one flavor. You can see that from the power consumption, we're talking about the extremely low power, the the lowest power A4 dual Vini. It's, ava it's, it's available really in, in, in four flavors. We're talking about our E-series of APUs. The E-series of APUs E1 and E2 for the opening price <coughs> point major systems or opening price point ultra thin systems. And it's scaling up into A4 and A6 area where A4 and A6 to mash are the quad-core APUs. Again, um, we focused a lot in you know, further improving our um, graphics capabilities. Obviously, you know, the previous generation of platforms, Brazos, E1, E2, um, already offered a good, very good graphics capabilities. Um, especially in the price point where it, compar where it competes. Here we're talking about a further increase of, uh, of over 80% over the previous generation in terms of the graphics capabilities of those, of those entry-level opening price point platforms. Very importantly, it is the one and only opening power price point platform. You know, with all the all the range of multi-threaded applications hitting the market, uh, we are going to see good performance increases in those 
uh, of the applications and the, on those multitasking um, multitasking music scenarios, where which you know use the multi-core, multi-threaded uh, performance. And we don't forget about the battery life. Uh, the further you know improvements on the power consumption and the battery life on those new Cabini um, Cabini products. Talking about battery life, uh, this is a comparison between our previous generation products, there on top, and a Cabini product there at the bottom. And if you compare, you know, our 2012 platforms to the 2013 platforms, really in every usage scenario, whether it's a Windows Idle, whether it's a web browsing over Wi-Fi, or whether it's a video playback. We made a very, very significant improvements and gains in terms of the better life. And really, you know, both in this category of products at the opening price point, or if you consider um, us at the higher price point, uh, we do have a better life leadership um, in the market today. Okay, let's take a look at some you know, further benchmarks. Uh, in you know when we talk about those categories of products, E series, E1 and D2 APUs, or A4 and A6 APUs, we position them in the market, you know, somewhere in the area of Pentiums and Core i3s of this world, and that's the reason you know to choose those two particular products for those comparisons. Um, we, uh, we're showing here really three benchmarks or three usage scenarios. The first one is, or well, the first two are the graphics and gaming, and you know we show here that our entry level platforms retain um, a, a, a you know leadership in terms of the graphics and gaming experience. We have a very significant advantage in terms of the battery life, and finally as we move to this new brave world of fully, fully graphics accelerated OpenCL based applications which you know are being developed pretty much like as we speak to hit the market this year and early next year so if we look at really the OpenCL benchmarks that uh, like benchmark CL that's where you know our APUs really excel in the processing of those new types of applications and that's what you know makes us very comfortable about you know about our technology in the future, especially if we consider the HSA architecture, heterogeneous systems architecture, which we're going to be launching with the next generation of platforms, and which will you know further probably tenfold improve that kind of that kind of picture. As usual, to finish off with uh, with Cabini, this is our product stack in this particular segment of the market. As mentioned, we have an E1 and E2 segment, which are the dual core dual core CPUs, and then we move up the stack of Cabini with A4 and A6, which are both um, mainstream quad solutions. I think also me worth mentioning on that slide are the uh, the TDPs, the power consumption of, 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 of those um, of those chips, we're really talking about the low power <coughs> scanning from nine to twenty-five watt um, for those um, for those opening price point platforms. And last but not least, we move up the stack. That's our um, elite performance APU card, codenamed Richland. That's the platform that we position for premium ultra thins, for premium performance laptops, uh, primarily in a 13 to 17 inch form factors. The graphics performance went up very significantly uh, in comparison to our previous generation A series APUs. We 
put a lot of emphasis on the responsiveness with AMD Start Now technology, which basically enables you know, the boot um, of the system in you know, pretty much as little as, as seven seconds, and which uh, enables uh, um, uh, wake up in, one point s in, in basically as little as 1.7 seconds. Finally, for those you know, pretty much high-end performance platforms, we also enabled our exclusive AMD software experiences. And really, you know, the AMD face login, your face is your password. AMD gesture control, this is like a preview of this brave new world that you've seen, you know, in the, in, in the, in the, in the video from Microsoft. And you know, with um, with good luck, I am going to um, try to demo those two to you right now. So in order to do that, I will start with um, duplicating my screen. Yeah, that worked at least. So um, you know, let me start with with a face login. I mean, the situation is simple. I want to log into my PC. Uh, I don't need to key in my password. I just get here in front of the PC. Uh, I blink my eyes, and it logs me in. And did you see? I actually look like a bl black, black blob on this camera. But the lightning condition is really, really tough here, with the you know light pretty much like all over me. But you know, we did. We can analyze a lot of data when. Um, when using AMD face login, we analyze the shape shape of the face, the shape of of a nose and eyes, the shape of ears. So we use, we use some very specific biometric data for login. Um, let me just try to do it again. I lock the PC. I get in front of the camera. I blink my eyes. I blink is a security feature, which basically you know, if nobody tries to do my photo, and basically looks. Um, I can use it. I can use it for running. I can use it for logging into my computer. I can use it for lo for logging into my PC, but I also can use face login to signing into to the um, to the website. So you know, as I get into uh, as I get into LinkedIn, the same uh, AMD face login. P window appears, I get in front of the camera, blink my eyes, it puts in my login and password and logs me into the password protected websites. I'm sorry? Oh, I should have used LinkedIn obviously. Could have logged into my Lufthansa Miles and Morik Um Okay, so this was face login. Now let us take a look quickly at the gesture control. So on this PC, I've got I've got some photos. Okay, here are the photos of my my my, my daughter's feeding deers. Um, there we go. Um, so. I can, you know, start controlling and, you know, I put my hand here so that you see I'm not cheating. And I can start controlling these photos. Oh, they're not here, sorry. Yeah, here. Um, I can start controlling those photos using gesture. Going left, going backwards. I can put them into the full screen mode, which I'm actually... Well, it works, but I need to duplicate my screen. Um, here we go. 
I can put them into the full screen mode and browse through them in the full screen mode and then with a tap I can exit the full screen mode. So tap I can again browse through them again and put them in the full screen. Yes, the sounds sounds are pretty dramatic. Um, the second thing that I can do is you know, if I go to my music, I can start the music playback. I have a very strange music taste as well. And <coughs> you know, I have a playlist. I create created the playlist and I can start controlling the playlist using gesture as well. I can pause the playback. <coughs> I can pause the playback, I can skip a few songs, and I can restart the playback. So, so this was basically gesture control and face login. We also have another technology called the image screen mirror, which basically allows the DLNA sharing across, you know, any DLNA, DLNA sharing of your screen across any DLNA enabled screen within your home, whether it's a smart t smart TV or another PC or running running Windows Media Player or really anything else of this of that of that um, of that type. <coughs> Come back to the presentation now. So we have the AMD face login and the AMD gesture control. They are all, a, 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 they are all available as uh, AMD Elite software experiences. They are available for download or for bundling. So in some cases they will be pre-bundled on the Richland-based systems. In some cases they are user downloadable. So you know we, we can divert the user to amd.com slash experiences. That runs the compatibility checker and allows the user to install uh, install those AMD experience software by, them, software by themselves. And by the way, you know, I showed you some examples, but I can actually control PowerPoint with gesture too. Okay, again, it is performances. That's really, you know, our name for best graphics and best, best media experience that we have. Elite Experience Program, that's our software. And Elite Better Life, that's obviously, you know, like all day power type of features. This, these three pillars we are enabling with our performance A8 and A10 region platforms. There's one more technology that we enable with A8 and A10, and that is wireless display. You know, I think probably you've heard for a while our competitor talking about wide eye. Um, which is their you know, proprietary feature. Um, we were waited a bit longer with introduction of our AMD wireless display into the market. We waited until you know the, the technology got standardized. And right now, with Miracast, there is a, a wireless display standard out there, and there is you know a number of 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 HDMI dongles on the market supporting Miracast. Um, and there is obviously Microsoft supporting Miracast as well. So um, you know this is we, we are at the pretty much like at the at the momentum when when this uh, we expect is going to become if not mainstream then at least a, a solution widely accepted in the market. Uh, with our solution in particular um, we have excellent responsiveness. If you have a chance to test it, you'll see that it's actually the only gameable wireless solution. By saying gameable, I don't mean the, the, the games like, you know, flash games. I mean DX11 latest games in high resolution can be played on the external screen using, using my AMD wireless display. Um, so basically, very good responsiveness. Um, uh, you know, the ping is immediate, uh, so, so really, really very, 
very solid wireless display solution. I couldn't skip the benchmarks. Um, gaming, Barry Alive, and the game OpenCL. Um, the picture has not changed uh, unless you consider, you know, that our um, that our <coughs> leadership in terms of graphics in that A8 and A10 space is actually significantly higher, even higher than in our opening price point space. We are very pleased with how we perform on the battery side. And we're also looking forward to the number of OpenCL enabled, up, enabled applications which will, sure, which will really show the advantage that we can deliver with AMD and with our architecture. How do we position our platforms competitively? If we consider our A6, A8 and A10 APUs, so our premium APUs, we position them basically against Core i3 and Core i5 segments. That's price-wise they they, they, where, where they sit in the market. That's where, you know, if we consider the overall consumer experience and, <coughs> and performance, that's where we can show good, uh, you know, uh, good experience and performance in terms of the, in terms of the benchmarks numbers as well. And as usual, the product at the very end, in the Richland series, we have our uh, we have our 35 watt parts, so pretty much a standard voltage parts, uh, which enable pretty much a traditional laptops. A few of them you see um, at the back of the room. Um, we have a dual core solution with A6, and we have a quad core solution with A8 and A10. But at the same time, within Richland, with our, within our elite, elite a APUs, we have the low power versions of 17, 19, and 25 watts. And these particular APUs enable the premium ultra-thin, um, sub-20 millimeter thick um, uh, laptops um, <coughs> in that you know, upper space of the market. Again, A4 and A6 are dual cores and A8 and A10 are the quad cores. Probably one more thing that you know is worth mentioning on that slide is actually the, uh, the number of radian, co radian cores. So we basically scale the platform between 128 to 384 radian cores, and pretty much 384 radian cores. This is the number of, of, course, of, of radian cores that you get with our uh, mainstream uh, type of discrete GPUs. And that's the type of perform graphics performance that we can expect from our A8 and A10s. Mm -hmm. Before I wrap it up, I have a few last slides on Richland again, so on our, um, our elite platform, but for desktop. With desktop, with us not being limited by the power and TDP and the form factor of the notebook when we are able to scale the platform to 65 watt and 100 watt and beyond that we are actually able to get the best of our architecture in terms of the raw performance we're talking about the 779 gigaflops of, perform of raw compute performance from our desktop A10 we're talking about the proper discrete graphics type of APU um, on, with, with, the, with the proper discrete class graphics on the chip, and we're talking about you know the dual graphics capabilities, um, which come actually both with the notebook and with the desktop GPUs. Finally, important for you know, compon our component business, the platform transition is easy. If you consider our 2012 platforms moving to the 2013 platforms, the same motherboards, the same chips, the same infrastructure supports both platforms. So basically, this is a really easy transition, both for our, you know, our OEM customers as well as for our end-user customers who wish to upgrade their um, uh, their desktops. There are a few of the benchmarks that you know um, are worth mentioning here. One is again Basemark CL, where 
you know, which pretty much shows this new world of upcoming applications. PC Mark 8, PC Mark 8 especially in the home scenario, um, where we can show really good performance against our, you know, head-to-head -head performance against our direct competition. And obviously, the new 3D Mark Fire Strike, where our graphics performance on the desktop, on the APU side, is again uh, highly superior to anything that our competitor can deliver. Finally, it's a curious com it's a curious comparison because this comparison shows i5 on chip GPU, i5 plus NVIDIA GT630, and the A10 APU. Uh, basically as APU only without any discrete graphics attached. <coughs> and in those three examples that, that we've shown here, Bioshock Infinite, Tomb Raider, and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, you can see that even with a, um, with a discrete GPU, G the GT630 attached, you do not get the fully playable frame rates of 30 FPS while with A10, in Tomb Raider, in Bioshock Infinite, in Far Cry 3, probably not with the, all the quality feature maxed out, but you can get into the playable frame rates with the AMD APU. It's not only about the performance, it's also about the quality. Uh, the lightning is here very complex, but, you know, uh, with Tress FX, with the hair of, of Laura Craft, um, the specific technology for you know for making hair real, real realistic, with our DirectX 11 features that we enable in our A10, basically you know the, the quality of game uh, and it looks much more realistic and much better on our technology as opposed to the to the um, HD graphics 4000 or of our competitor. Finish this off. This is, you know, I mentioned to some extent, but this is the positioning A6 and A8 going against I3 in a desktop space, A10 going against I5 and probably extending a little bit beyond the I5 in the direction upwards of the market. And these are the products. Basically, scale the, scale the desktop processors from the 45 watt variant for you know, our OEM customers developing small phone factors, 65 watt for our uh, for our mainstream platforms, and then to the 100 watt area for our enthusiast platforms. And really, this is the time to summarize. We have a strong lineup. Scale our platform from the top to the bottom, also based on the features. If I consider something like an E1, E2, or A4 APU, we deliver the basics. We deliver some media features, because that's what people do, whichever notebook they buy for this. We include here the better life, because for us the better life is the baseline, which people tend to expect when they buy, when they buy their new device. But when, as we scale up the stack, as we move to the A6, we start adding some extra benefit to the end customers. In the case of A6, we start adding AMD Screen Mirror. When we move to A8, we start adding gesture control, face login, and all the so basically all the natural user interfaces that we're enabling with our platforms this year. And then, you know, you probably have seen or picked up the you know the gaming bundles. That's what we put a lot of focus on this year in the component world, but that's where we put a lot of focus in the, com in the consumer world as well. We have excellent software partnerships this year with Tomb Raider, with Bioshock, with, um, with Far Cry, and we continue on that path, and we will continue on that path uh, with some very exciting games uh, coming within the AMD Gaming Evolve, Gaming Evolve partnership as we move to the second half of the year into, into the 2014. And we will basically use those as other, you know, 
to, to offer some additional benefit to the customer who buy our top of the line products. <coughs> the second part of the summary is our graphics leadership. Whether you're looking at the smallest form factors at the lowest power, or the mainstream segment with opening price points, or to the top of the line with our elite APUs, we do have a graphics leadership. That's our strength coming from the coming from ATI takeover <coughs> several years ago. <coughs> And that's the IP, so that's our intellectual property, which we're going to be using to our advantage as we move forward. So the world has come where we've always been. We've been strong on graphics, and the world is moving to graphics. We've been strong on graphics, and we've been preaching the use of graphics beyond gaming into the general purpose computing, and that's with OpenCL, that's exactly where the world is moving. So in this new client world, with those new requirements, with the new software experiences, heavily focused on graphics and graphics beyond gaming, we are positioned very well. And that's you know, what you're going to see further, that we, start, we keep developing with the HSA and heterogeneous systems architecture as we move to the next generation platforms, which would fully enable the, the complete OpenCL um, OpenCL and accelerated processing capabilities. And that was it from the product side. So if you have any questions, ask away. <laughs> <laughs>